Look at all that. That is straight up from the radiator. How's it going guys? My name is Chase Farrow and welcome to my channel. I'm here in my garage with my, well, currently disassembled Corvette. The reason it's disassembled is because you may have noticed at some point in my videos or by looking right there, you can see that I have to use boards in order to get in and out of my garage. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was back in my car into the garage and my front driver's side wheel came off the board without me realizing it. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was my fender where the rocker panel meets the fender where that mounts snagged the transition and unfortunately it ended up breaking that down there as you can see. The other unfortunate thing is it also did some damage to some other areas. Specifically, it busted this mount right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what I can do about fixing this. And since I have the front end of the car all torn apart anyways, I'm going to make some more modifications to the cooling. But first, I'm going to see what I can do about fixing this mount. I figured the best way to go about that would be to take a washer or something and uh, place it, like use some like JB Weld to hold it to the underside there. That way it brings it back into shape. And then I would also JB Weld that right there. That should pretty well do. And that'll not only bring it back into the shape that it's supposed to be, but it'll also kind of add a little reinforcement. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna see what I can do about fixing this down here a little bit. Unfortunately, that one's gonna be quite the task. I don't have the necessary parts to address that in this video, so that'll be a little bit later. So for now, let's uh, get started. So if you've never mixed JV Weld before, uh, it's very simple. You're just gonna take equal parts of the two compounds provided. So like the first part I think is the JV Weld Steel, and then the second part is the JV Weld Hardener. Put a pretty decent amount right beside there. Looks like I might have be a little bit off on my mixture. Now, I couldn't find any of my little mixing sticks. So, this uh, whimsical straw will have to do. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get some of this onto my washer here. Kind of do so carefully because obviously you don't want to get a whole bunch of it on the uh, inside of the washer because well you don't want any of that JV weld kind of obstructing your ability to get a bolt through it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully take this washer, just make sure this is kind of in the right shape that it's supposed to be, and stick the washer right here. Oh no, so I've got it lined up. So I'm going to take some more JV Weld. I'm going to apply it here where I know it is cracked. See if I can close that up. This is not going to be a pretty fix, that's for sure. But it should be a functional one. So now that's done. I'm going to go ahead and take these gloves off. I'm going to let that sit for a while. Now, a few videos ago, I modified the cooling package on the car by opening up the front of the car and then cutting part of the radiator shroud so that air could pass through as the, you know, straight forward into the radiator. Unfortunately, what ended up happening, I didn't take this into consideration. As that air was pushing through there, it ended up actually pushing and kind of collapsing the shroud a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up a bit more since the front bumper and everything is already off. So I'm going to take this top cover off of the radiator shroud and I'm going to take the intake off and all of that fun stuff and I'm going to start cutting in there and I'm also going to use the uh, compressor to blow some of that debris out. It's been a little while since I've done it so I figure since the front of the car is already torn apart, now is as good of a time as any to do that. So let's get to it.
All right, now that I've got all that off just in time for the neighbors to start mowing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set the camera up and I'm kinda gonna just do a time lapse of me cutting out more of that uh, radiator shroud. Now what I will say, there's a couple of things in a couple of spaces I am going to go ahead and preserve and not get rid of the whole thing altogether because I do like the fact that this wiring harness has a nice little clip there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut pretty much around that section. And uh, so I'm gonna leave that. It's not hurting anything anyway being there. And I'm gonna just open more of that up now. So I'm gonna get to it. So now I've gotten this all cut out right here, nice and clean. Uh, I am going to uh, put the uh, little sanding tool on the end of it. I'm gonna go over this, make it look a little bit nicer. I mean, no one's ever gonna see it, but I know it's there and it'll bug me otherwise. I'm also going to uh, blow all this out as I had said. However, I realized, so when I initially made my cut down there, because obviously I had stated before that I wanted to retain all this, so I didn't want to lose that when I cut it. And I just realized something. It didn't occur to me that having that space cut out down there kind of compromised the overall rigidity of the piece. And so what was happening was I would get to about 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour, and it'd be good. And then all of a sudden, after 70-ish, my temps would start kind of climbing up again. So what was happening was is the air was coming through the front as it was supposed to do and it was pushing the whole thing back. And so it was actually pushing it up against the uh, condenser grate. And it was actually kind of constricting airflow more to the top of the, of the uh, radiator and all that because obviously this isn't directing air really upwards effectively anymore. So I will say, if you do want to do this the way that I have, and you want to turn your C5 Corvette into a front feeder instead of a bottom feeder or bottom breather, whatever you want to call it, then I would recommend cutting up higher. Now that being said, I am going to have to stop there for now because I need to run to either Lowe's, Home Depot, somewhere so I can get a hose because I forgot when we were up at the shop, I forgot to grab the hose. I got the chuck, I got the compressor, but I forgot that this is not a Bluetooth compressor so I don't have wireless air. So I'm going to pause for now and I'll come back to this. All right, so running errands ended up taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, I was a little bit late getting back last night. By the time I got back, it was dark. So I'm gonna now get to blowing out the radiator. But before I do that, there's a couple of things I wanna show you. First of all, I took the uh, clamps off of the mount here, and it looks like this is actually cured very well. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, I mean, it. so I think I should be able to get one of those clip nuts or whatever they're called through it, and I think it should hold fine. The other thing that I did last night was, after finishing cutting the radiator shroud, uh, I wanted to put some edge trim on there to kind of clean it up and make it look a little bit nicer. Now, I didn't do that on camera, but here, if you look, you can see how that turned out. 
it's not perfect, it's not spectacular, it's not a work of art by any means, but it cleaned up those jagged edges and uh, you know, just in general made it look nice and I, you know, I think that was a nice touch just to, you know, kind of keep it up there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set up my camera and I'm going to continue blowing out the radiator. I'm not going to do it the traditional way. You're technically supposed to take the radiator fans off, lift the car up, and then blow it out from the back. I actually have relatively recently, it's been about a year and a, about a year since I blew it out last time. So I'm going to elect to not do that route. I'm going to just go from the front. I'm going to get everything I can out. Shouldn't be too much, but we'll see. Actually, this this will be a good test to see how much crap these things suck up over only about a year and three months worth of driving. So let's get to it. So just finished making my first pass with the air compressor and that is what came out so i think i think there's some more under there as well i think that was probably greatly contributing to the temperature of the car so i think between blowing the radiator out and that cut out there i think that's going to make a pretty significant difference in the uh, car's efficiency when it comes to the you know the operation of the cooling system so <clears throat> now i'm probably going to make a couple more passes off camera but i mean you saw how i did it the first time i don't think you really need to watch another couple of time lapses of me making passes so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do that off camera i'm going to get all this put back together and i think i'm also going to actually uh, hit the engine with some degreaser because man this is dirty so i'm gonna hit it with some uh engine degreaser uh as well do a couple other little odds and ends and then i'm gonna kind of start getting some of this stuff put back together one hour later so i might have done something kind of dumb <clears throat> but we'll see depending on how it works out i passed a whole bunch of cops on the way here i'm at the uh car wash so i had the bright idea decided to come to the car wash bring the car down here it hasn't driven in about a week and a half so i wanted to make sure the battery wasn't dead I figured it'd be a good opportunity to clean out, clean the engine bay, hit it with some degrees. I think it's sig like significantly cleaner than it was. I need to rewrap some of these wires, but that's a project for another day. I also got rid of that stupid air box and threw just a pod filter on it. I passed like three cops on the way here. Amazingly, none of them pulled me over because uh, I'm fairly certain <laughs> with the front of my car in the current state, I am breaking a myriad of laws. So. I'm gonna take it back to the garage and uh, put a few other things back together. So here we go. All right, so I got home, no tickets, amazingly. I passed like six cops, dude. But check this out though. So this is what ended up underneath my car after blowing out the radiator. Look at all that. That is straight up from the radiator. So that is only about a year and out. Some of that dirt may not actually be just from the radiator but that's pretty much a year and three months of not blowing it out so yeah that's crazy all right so it is the next day by the time i got home it was already dark couldn't really see much in the dark so here is the result hit it with some of the uh, engine degreaser it's not clean clean but it's a lot cleaner than it was before uh it does look like the mount has cured nicely it doesn't look pretty but I mean, it's solid, so it's not going anywhere. I should be able to mount the fender there without any problems. So I think that's where I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off for this video. I'm gonna continue to do some more cleaning and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna leave you guys with that. So I will see you next time. Bye.